Do I have something special to share with you guys today? Oh my goodness. Straight from Canada. You'll never guess what's in this box. Maybe some of you might. This was sent to me yesterday, just came in the mail. Did I say from Canada? From my new friend and subscriber, Richard. Richard contacted me a while back and says, I have something really special I'd like to send you. And this is it. Uh, the funny thing about this, Richard, is that I um, was just watching, maybe a week ago, a Paul Sellers video about this very plane. And when I saw that, I thought, my man, would I, would I, wouldn't get to have one of those. I never thought I'd come across one. These are rare. I've never held one before. We're going to see this together for the first time. If it's what I think it is, I, and I think it is. Are you ready? In the original box. That's what we have here. Well, that's nice. That's Thank you, Richard. He's, he's printed out the instructions, the original instruction manual that would have, would have came with this. Oh my goodness, look at that. Is it complete? Oh, that's beautiful. Rosewood handle. Looks like that must be the, f the f uh, fence. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, look, look at this. Well, there's more things in there. Those must be... Those look like... Okay, those are the crossbars, the depth gauges. Oh, look at this. This envelope contains shaving deflector. So this would have been... That would have been where the small parts where they would have came with in the original packaging. Isn't that cool? What is this all about? Cutters. Oh, I see. Okay, so this is. Oh, this is this is fantastic. Look at this. And they're are they all there? They are. Everything is complete. Okay, so what these are? So these are the cutters here for the plow cutters. So we've got eight three sixteenths quarter five clear all the way up to seven eighths. These are the plow cutters. These would be cutting for cutting. A rabbit? These are for, for doing beading. You know like your Wayne's coating? Where you have that this beautiful round decorative, I think they call it beading, from half inch clear down to, to eighth inch. And this I believe, this is really interesting here, look at this. So this must be for cutting tongue and groove. This would be for cutting the, the tongue with an adjustable depth for the thickness of the tongue right there on the cutter itself and they are sharp wow that must be unusual to find one that has all of its bits and pieces like that what a nice what a beautiful little wooden box too look how that fits in there well, that is special isn't it okay let's see if we can figure this out i haven't so here is the main body of the plane and boy it's beautifully made Stanley, made in England. Oh, there's the spurs. Actually, I remember in the letter that Richard said, okay, yeah, that's right, that he had to, one of these spurs was missing. This is for a cross grain, right, for a cross graining. And one of these spurs was missing, and he made one out of a hacksaw blade. Let's take our handy-dandy Victornox Forester, one of my favorites. Look at that. So there's the, that looks like a hacksaw blade there. So Richard made this. How clever is that? Look at, he did a good job on that too. How clever is that to be able to make one out of a hacksaw blade? What, why that? So that's hard, a hacksaw blade. I mean, obviously, that's super hard. By using the blade, he didn't have to, to anneal a hole. Or kneel for the hole. Well, I think that looks really good, Richard. Just needs a little bit of cleaning up on that corner. What a great idea. I, I never thought about doing that with a hacksaw blade. There's the original one. Those are, actually, those are probably pieces that are not going to be used that often. Um, well, who knows? I've never used one. But it seems that you would be doing mostly with, working with the grain. 
I'm gonna put that back on there before I lose it. Made in England. Sheffield. Sheffield, England. Boy, good stuff comes out of Sheffield. I wonder if she Sheffield Steel, you know, you always hear that. that. They made the best steel back in the day. When England was an empire nation, I think a lot of the swords and armaments come out of Sheffield, if I have remember my history. Those of you who live in England, does Sheffield still have that rich tradition of making quality steel and tools that they had for so many years? Why isn't it beautiful? Beautiful handle. Let's put it together here. So it seems to me... Okay, so we've got these threaded rods here, right? Looks like that goes in there. You see they've got a hole in the end of them, so you could use a nail or something to further tighten them up. The finishes are nice on this, aren't they? Here's the second one. So there's the adjustment there for the for the um, the uh, adjusting the thickness of the iron. Oh man, I'm getting goosebumps over this. This is this is a beautiful tool. Isn't that, isn't that great? Look at that. Okay, so this is the number fifty. Okay, right there. So that's where one of the spurs would go if you're going to cross cut, if you're going to cut cross grain. I'm, a, I'm thinking here, and the other one right there. That's not unlike the um, the other rabbit plate I have. So this. Okay, I see. All right, so so you take this off here. So this is what adjusts the. Uh, this is what's going to hold the blade in there. And the. That wing nut there is going to tighten it. So let's put this on here. This video might be two parts. I don't care. We're having good. Fun. We're having fun here, aren't we? Beautiful. Okay, so that goes on there like that. Boy, really tight tolerances. And this will pull that in. Okay. We're, that's exactly what it is. What a good-looking little wing nut! Isn't that got a nice shape to it? It's they made a narrow one because it's it, there's a conflict with that little. I don't know what that thing is yet. Okay, so let's say we wanted to put a blade in. Or are they called? Are these called irons or cutters? What are they called? Cutter. Cutters. They're called cutters. Okay, so we'll say we're going to do a a half inch rabbit, right? Here over here. Half inch. Oh, they're even stamped on there. That's really nice, isn't it? You don't have to get have to have the guesswork there. Okay, so obviously because see we got those little teeth there. Look at that. So that that's going to correspond here with this. This is going to control the depth of it, right? All right. So I took that side plate off there because I want I want you to see how this how this works here. All right. See the little teeth in there. Those teeth there, how they that fit, this fits right in that groove there, and you got to put it in the teeth, and that's going to control. There we go. That's going to control the depth. Right there, you see that. Now, if we look on the back side of this, this has a groove as well, right there that that's going to ride on. So if we drop this down here, very carefully. And that goes through there. There, look at that. Look how it lined up in there. It's just, what a nice machine finish that is. Now, now we can control that depth of that. Look at that. Very cool. Okay, so we've got this stud here with this washer. I know we're, we're, we're I'm learning it. I'm just figuring it out as we go here. So I don't I don't know about these. I've never used one before. But you can bet there'll be a video coming up soon where we do use one, or use this one. The Stanley Fifty. Okay. So if we pull that, so we can now we can adjust our. There we go. So we can adjust our depth of our cutter, and once we get our depth adjusted, we can tighten that down. And now that's pulled that in there. What's this for here? 
that's probably to pack back it off so you can if you want to put a bigger one in there just to help you move it okay so we've got that next piece is going to be the fence so this is going to this is going to be how we control where we want to go on our right there how far in this is going to control um, if we're doing a beaded board or bead board or wainscoting or something like that then we'll if we want it every inch or every two inches and we would continue to to set that and that would be our guide and lock those screws down and then we've got that don't we so what are these all about what are these all about so this is yeah that goes in there that's that's for the depth gauge so that controls how deep we make our cut by setting this and then tighten it with that wing nut right there. But there's two of these. There's also, this is a, it's got a great big one here. I don't know what that's for. You can't, it doesn't go down as far. I'm not really sure what that is here. We'll have to, we'll have to look into this. But I think that that's right. I think that's where it goes. This is probably the regular this is probably the depth gauge to use. That might have something to do with the beading, doing the beading on it. Boy, it's beautiful, isn't it? And a wooden rosewood handle. I like rosewood. Rosewood, I've got a rosewood four tip or four end on my 300 Weatherby Magnum, my Mark V. I've always liked that. It's pretty. Much nicer to have a wooden handle in a cold shop than a, uh, than a metal one. Boy, that's a, isn't that nice? Is that, isn't that nice, isn't it? Made in England. Wow. What's really cool is, is it appears to be all complete. So look at these. So these guys here, and maybe I didn't talk about this here. So these would do, be doing for doing your beading there, your wainscoting. I wonder how you, those wouldn't be very easy to sharpen, would they? You'd have to have just the perfect size rod. I don't know how to do that. So much to learn, so much knowledge we've lost, isn't it? Wow, that's neat. What a cool little wooden case, too. That's neat. I can't wait to try this out. Got all the instructions here, too. I don't want to bore you with those. I'll, I'll read those in there tonight. Looks like it's the, all the original instructions on how to set it up. Um, beading, matching tongue and groove, rabbiting beading, center beading, how to set it up. There's all the nomenclature there. Looks like it's, looks like it's all complete. Richard said there was one little screw missing somewhere. And I think I know what that is. Um, I think it's a, something something to do with holding in the smaller irons. But that's it. I'm going too long. What are we? Fifteen minutes. Thank you so much, Richard. This is really special. What a what a what an heirloom tool. I'm so excited to take this out in the shop and try it. Man, what a treasure that is. How very generous. Thank you, Richard. I will. I will. Um, I will learn how to use this, and I will use this in future projects. And I'll, well, next one, oh, we'll try it out here pretty soon. We'll do a little board beating, and I'll share that with you, and we'll see. We'll we'll learn together, see how it, how it goes. So that's it. We'll see you guys on the next video. You know, this is one of those tools that you read about and you see other people have that you just never think you'll ever find, never think you'll ever have. Uh, I want to give a very sincere uh, thank you and appreciation to uh, Richard for sending that over i uh, am very grateful for that that's something that is going to be very special to me very uh, uh, something that i'm looking forward to using and incorporating so that's not the only thing there's a couple of the really fun things that have come in the mail uh, that i'm looking forward to share with you uh, very soon so many of you hundreds of you if not a thousand have requested me to do something you wanted me to put together the back to basic series the multi-part series into um a small movie and that's what I've done on the right hand side uh, remastered re-edited 
uh, all of the Im uh, the intros, the extras, all uh, uh, edited out of it. You can watch it in, in its entirety. It's just under an hour long um, without interruption. So uh, there it is for you guys. And I'll put a link over there to that on the channel. On the left hand, if you just can't get enough of the Stanley Plains, I've got another one for you. The Stanley, is it the... Oh, I forget the model number now. My rabbit plane. Uh, that's another one that uh, I'm learning to use. I think you really enjoy. Beautiful, beautiful plane. Kind of like this on the similar, similar in many ways, um, but different. So thanks for watching. If you haven't taken uh, the time to click the thumbs up, I invite you to do that now so you can support the channel. And I invite you to subscribe if you enjoy these videos. Uh, um, that's how you can have access to more, more to come. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next video. Made me think there was something coming, something. Whoa.